it has been a solid year for home prices around the world. The Global Property Guide's latest report shows particularly strong growth in Europe, North America, and parts of Asia. Most of the countries they track saw prices surge over the last year, but the Middle East is leading the pack with Qatar at the top. A construction boom in preparation for the 2022 World Cup helped boost prices. The stronger economy and a growing population also bolstering the housing sector. Now, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Sweden and Ireland round out the top five. The Middle East is also home to the worst performer in the survey, that's Dubai. House prices in Dubai fell by more than 50% after the 2008 housing crisis. Now, despite a rebound in home prices, they continued to tumble this year. Dubai remains one of the world's most volatile housing markets. Russia, Egypt and Brazil also fared rather poorly in the report. All right, for more on the global housing market, I'm joined by Richard Nassimi, founder of the Nassimi Group. Richard, great to have you back with us. Michelle, it's a pleasure to be here. All right, Richard, let's start off with the U.S. And now uh, we have the Standard & Poor's Case Shilling 20 uh, City Home Price Index, what is considered to be the leading gauge of the U.S. housing market. For October, price is up about 5.5% year over year. For the year at large, they're up about 5%. What's behind the increase? Well... There was something very important to talk about that happened two weeks ago, that the Fed increased finally after 80 months the interest rates of 0.25%. Lending was very, very easy. Credit was very, very easy. So people were spurring the economy by purchasing. Don't forget the inventory was still at the lowest level. So trying to take advantage of the low Fed rates and what it means for mortgages. Of Is, course. So we had a boost there. Okay, well now the Fed has raised uh, the interest rate by 25 basis points to half a percent. What does that mean for mortgages and for the housing market in 2016? Well, the quarter first of 2016, you will see an increase only of 3% in the economy. The, the fact that there's still a shortage of uh, condominiums, apartments, assets for sale in a major metropolis will still keep the market on as soon as become quarter two of 2016 when especially in cities big metropolis like new york city right. you're gonna see an abundance of over 3,000 apartments on the market then the because of the construction boom co oh, correct so what does that mean for the market in 2016 do you think we're going to see a price decrease then combined of, with the of fed rate you're not going to see a huge decrease you're going to be more a safe landing the one that was uh, greenspan was trying to predict uh well speaking of our friend greenspan how would you say the market has recovered since 2008 well in 2008 until 2011 the market was undervalued of nearly six percent now we overvalued at nearly 10 percent so there was a drastic change in 2008 we had like a big real estate tsunami it took over all the economy well are there any cities in the u.s right now that are at risk of overheating miami san francisco san francisco is funded mm -hmm. by china mainland mm -hmm. so it's well overvalued and also towns like chicago maybe they're having a big growth the only one I feel it's a little bit out of the specter is California, where the high tech are taking over. Until they're alive, we are okay. Okay, so as long as high tech keeps on at it. Let's talk a little bit about Europe. Uh, as we said, the housing crisis eight years ago, and it looks like history could be about to repeat itself, at least according to UBS and Deutsche Bank. They're saying that uh, there's a lot of overvaluation in the European markets, uh, with London the most overvalued market there. What do you think? London is the only, I would call the only country town in the entire Europe that is still keeping up the pace like America, because it's the only country where investors are prone, like in New York City. However, don't forget that Greece, Italy, and France are still in high debts. But you've got the likes of Amsterdam as well, which, uh, according to UBS and Deutsche, are overvalued. Do you think there's a risk of a UK and a European housing bubble? Of course. They're next. They're very close to it. And I'm telling you something right now. Germany economy has slowed down. So what would cause it to burst then if you're saying they're very close to it? Well, they have to increase the rates also there in Europe. But they're certainly not looking to do that. The ECB has kept its monetary policy very loose. Slowly, they have no choice because the only thing is going to be they're going to be funding from overseas, increasing the rates finally, and they're going to stop the entire economy. So have we learned nothing? 
it was not that we learned, we forgot. We forgot. We forgot about 2008. So what would the consequences be if we did have a housing market crash in the Europe, I in, in the UK I, and Europe? Michelle, I don't think we're going to have the same dramatic 2008 crash. We're going to have more like 2006, where there was more like a correction or a slowdown of the real estate market. The only people who are really going to get damaged are the people that are highly over leveraged with not real backup. That's the people who are going to get hit. Richard, very quickly, we've seen some recovery in China. What's your outlook for the Chinese housing market for 2016? Chinese, it's very close to a big collapse. China, has the government has tried to spur the real estate economy by, by coming with a lot of incentives. They're like lowering down the, the percentage for any investment, 10%. But we've, we've seen uh, a steady increase. We've seen some stabilization in the markets. Uh, the top tier cities are doing particularly well. Shenzhen's home prices were up 40% for November. That's the only, the, the only major town, like Beijing. Beijing, Shanghai, Beijing, they're Beijing, doing Shanghai. Very well. The rest of China is underdeveloped. No one wants to invest. What the Chinese government is doing is keeping the same strong policies on the major metropolis, but loosening up on the rest of China. So your outlook for the Chinese market, housing market, not very good for 2016. And also, I forgot to tell you something else, Michelle. A lot of Chinese investors are still pouring money inside the United States of America, leaving China out of the investment routes. Well, we'll see what transpires. As always, good to have you. Thank you so much, Richard Nassimi, founder of the Nassimi Group.